Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Let's take a look here at creating this comic text in Adobe Illustrator. First thing you want to do to create this comic text is create a new document, obviously. Set the width to 400, the height to 250, and select landscape orientation. Okay, the landscape orientation is the wider, not the taller. RGB color mode, hit OK. First thing we're going to do, come over to the layers palette, double click to this layer. And that's going to open up your layer options. Rename the layer top of text. Give me several words or one word like I just did. Grab the text tool. We're going to swap our foreground color or our fill color, excuse me, and our stroke by hitting that little arrow. And then we're going to select the stroke and hit the slash key. That gets rid of the stroke. So now we're just going to be typing black fill. I'm going to type the word tut bid. Now I'm going to select the word after I deselect next. I'm going to reselect it. And up in my top toolbar, I have size options. And at this point, this text is set to 12 points. I want to change that to 110 points. So you can see, much, much bigger. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can get a good look at the whole thing. Now, one of the tricks behind getting a good comic look is you have to have a good comic font and you can go to all kinds of different free uh, font websites and download free fonts and that's what I suggest you do because the, your regular Myriad or Arial or any of those kind of fonts they're not going to give you the same result it's going to be a much much different result and it just won't look right so I have downloaded a comic font I actually downloaded it a while ago and I believe the name of it is the Grinched or Grinched or something like that. Here it is called New Unicode Font, as you can see. And this is the comic font I'm going to be using today. So once you find your comic font and you have your word typed out, first thing that you need to do is right click on it and hit Create Outlines. What that does is it essentially does what Photoshop would do when you rasterize the text. It's no longer editable text, just this is Adobe Illustrator, so technically it's not rasterized, it's all still vector but it's no longer editable text. What you've done is broken down each letter and made that its own path. So for instance, I can grab the U here and drag it up here. Okay, or I can resize letters individually. The only problem is in order to do that, I need to grab my direct selection tool. Well, the way we change that is select the whole thing and right now it's a group. So just right click on it and hit ungroup. We can now just select any letter and move it around or change the shape as we want to. So the first thing we're going to do is select the whole thing and we're going to change the color from black to a dark red here. I'm just going to select the dark red. Make sure you set that as the fill, not the stroke. And we're going to move this text around a little bit. We're going to grab the U and we're going to set it so we're attached to the T. We're going to grab this T and set it so we're attached to the U. Maybe a little more. More like that. We're going to bring the V over, and actually I'm going to rotate the V a little bit. That's a little bit too much. Basically, I'm just trying to connect all of my letters. This is one way um, that you can create your comic text is by connecting your letters like this. Um, another way may be you know, resizing them and kind of tucking them in next to each other, or there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. But just find good ways to connect your text, or ways that look half decent at least, to connect your text to each other. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Rotate this eye. Well, actually, maybe I won't rotate it. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to bring the D over and connect that just like that. So you can see here that we have all of our letters connected. And the reason, at least in this case, that I'm connecting all of our letters is because I'm going to merge all of our letters into one big shape. And sometimes when you merge uh, a lot of shapes into one, it really looks bad and it really messes a lot of things up. And for that matter, sometimes it doesn't even merge at all. It just does something. And that's what you want to be careful of. But here, hopefully, with this shape, we will be able to merge it just fine. Now, we can merge by coming up with a window and hitting Pathfinder. And that opens the Pathfinder palette. And you want to hit this button right here, third from the left in the Pathfinder section of the Pathfinder palette. That's Merge. And you can see all of our shapes have become one big shape now. It's exactly what I wanted. Let's 
put a grid inside of our text here. Now notice that our fill has become a question mark. That's because when we merged this, right here inside the D, this is its own shape. So in order to get rid of that, just grab the direct selection tool, select in the middle of the D, and just hit delete. Oops, wrong shape. Let me select the fill. Let's give it a gradient fill. Okay, now you can see the shape inside the D. Just select that and hit delete to get rid of that. All right, so we have this gradient now. We don't want a black to white gradient though, so grab the gradient palette. And first thing we're going to do is change the angle to 90. We're going to bring the white over to the right. We're going to leave the black over here and we're going to give this dark red on the black. Now in the middle, we're just going to create a yellow, just a bright yellow going up to white. Just like that. And then select the angle and use your arrow keys to nudge the angle until it's just perfect. I'm going to slide the white over some so we can see a little bit more of the white. Okay, and just like that looks pretty good for the angle. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of that white. And just like that, we have our gradient. Okay, so let's take care of the strokes here. Now, doing the strokes for this, we're actually going to have about three different strokes going around this text. Um, and there are a number of ways you can do this, but we're going to do it in what I think is the easiest and most simple and definitely the least cluttered way. So we're going to set one stroke here now. I'm going to double click on the stroke and we're going to set a black stroke to start. And I'm going to grab the stroke palette. We're going to set the weight of that stroke to, let's say, two points. No, no, let's make it 2.5 points. All right, so we have our first stroke right there. Now we need to get two more strokes on top of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this text and we're going to go into the appearance palette. Now here's the appearance palette right here. If the appearance palette isn't open, that's under window appearance. And because this is a group, we have to double click on contents. And here you can see we have a fill and a stroke. Well, we're going to select the stroke and we're going to drag it down to the new button. And we now have a second stroke. I'm going to select that stroke and I'm going to come up here to weight in my stroke palette. This is in my stroke palette, by the way. I'm going to select one as the weight and I'm going to select this bright red. I'm going to drag that out of my swatches palette over to the stroke section of the toolbar. So now you can see we have a one point red stroke. I'm going to select and drag that to the new button again. And this time I'm going to select half a point from my weight section in the stroke palette and I'm going to drag that bright yellow over to the stroke color. If I deselect, you can see we have three strokes now on our text. That's very good. And notice also that here in the appearance palette, these strokes actually work like layers. The black stroke here is on the bottom, the red stroke on top of that, and finally the yellow stroke on the very top of all of the others. So let's move the color palette out of the way. Now that we've finished making the stroke and the fill of our text here, Let's add a little bit of three-dimensionality to this text. First thing I need you to do is create a new layer, and we're going to name this layer Shadow, or for that matter, 3D Shadow, because it's going to be what adds that three-dimensional element to what we're drawing here. Drag the 3D Shadow layer beneath the top of text layer, and go into the top of text layer, and select that group, hit Command or Control C, close up the top of text layer, lock it, come down to 3D shadow layer and hit command or control F. So we've just pasted that entire thing in place. Now the only thing we have to do here before we start making this a shadow is select that group, go back to the appearance palette, double click into contents, select all three strokes by just hitting the top one, hitting shift and selecting the one on the bottom, drag them all to the trash. So now all that we have here is a fill. If I shut off the visibility of the first layer, and I select this and just fill it with yellow or what I need to really fill it with is black so you can see we have no fills here I'm going to turn the top layer back on now I'm going to select this 3D shadow layer and I'm going to nudge it to the right a couple times okay right about three times maybe that looks good I'm going to duplicate it twice now I'm going to command or control C and now command or control B because that pastes underneath instead of pasting in front paste underneath. I'm going to command or control B twice. Now this bottom group, the very bottom group, I'm going to lock it and shut off the visibility. We're going to get back to that in a minute. But for now, select the second group 
and we're going to nudge it back. So we're going to nudge it to the left three times. One, two, three. And then we're going to nudge it down. One, two, about three times is good. And you know what? Let's make it four times. There we go. Now, now that we've done that, notice that we have these corners that look like they're cut away. So we're going to change that. What we need to do is create a blend. But before we actually create the blend, we need to edit the blend tool so it works the way we want it to. Come over here into your tools palette. Right beneath the gradient tool is the blend tool. The hotkey is W. Double click on the blend tool though. And the default blend options for spacing is smooth color. Come down in the drop menu and hit specified steps and set the specified steps to about 20. Hit OK. Now what we need to do are sele is select both of these groups. Okay, I'm just coming into the layers palette. I selected one. I hit shift and selected the second one. Now I'm going to grab my magnifying glass and I'm going to grab the blend tool and I'm going to select corresponding anchor points on each shape because I actually have two shapes selected. So I just zoomed out there. Now I'm going to zoom in and just find two of the same anchor points. Usually corners are the easiest to see. So there we go. I just selected two of them. Or I must not have selected two of them. Let's try that again. There we go. I selected two. And you can see now we have that angle where we used to have that cutout. So that looks a little bit better. But remember that group that we shut off and we locked? What we're going to do with that is nudge it back to the left three times, one, two, three, so it's back in its original place, and now we're just going to nudge it straight, oh no, 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 excuse me, we're going to leave it nudged over to the right, don't nudge it back to the left, and we're just going to nudge this straight down two or three times, and that makes those corners look even better, I'm going to nudge it down one more time actually, just like that, that looks pretty good, now the only outside corner that we're going to have a slight problem with is the V, but that probably will not be too noticeable, so don't worry too much about that. Now, and the last thing we need to do is select that group that we just nudged down and go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. And I have the settings that I want to use right here. And that's the mode is normal, the opacity is 30, X and Y offsets are both 1 pixel, and the blur is 3 pixels. Hit OK. And we're going to create one new layer, drag it to the bottom. And to finish this text off, we're just going to draw an ellipse about that big behind this. We're going to tip it up diagonally like that. We're going to duplicate it, move it up and over, make it just a little bit smaller, and we're going to edit the color and come down to around orange. Just select a light tan, just like that. So right there, we have created some comic text, quick and easy, nice and easy. It's very simple to do, and it's a pretty cool effect if you're looking for that retro comic text effect. But that's it for this one. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, please go check the site out. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.